a link made in treaties on the liberal and mechanical arts going back to antiquity. The proportion, order and harmony play an essential role both in music and architecture. The Polish researcher Teresa Rudzinska Horace has recently analyzed the ground plans of palaces in Getsch and Ostrov Lednicki from the 10th century, comparing them with the diagrams that illustrate Boethius's texts, the Arithmetica and Geometria, and the Musica, in a contemporary manuscript with numerous illustrations that is kept in the Benedictine Abbey in Einsiedeln. In accordance with current research, the author is aware that, I quote, throughout the Middle Ages, illustrations in the forms of diagrams also appear in other books, such as scholarly compendia or works on cosmogony or philosophy, end of quote, and that, I quote, in these works, drawings played an important didactic role because they not only illustrated the text, but they primarily made memorizing easier, end of quote. But Boethius himself called the drawings descriptiones, while in the relevant musicological literature, they are named as diagrams or graphs. By comparing the diagrams in Boethius' texts from the 10th century with the ground plans of the pious palaces from the same period, the researcher provided evidence that, I quote, the layout of the rooms and their proportions point to the possibility of making use in this project of the knowledge taken from the philosophical treatise in which mathematical proportions are a basis for the theory of music understood as musica mundana. In both aspects, we have to do with an early medieval reception of the late antique legacy." End of quote. However, in our case, I do not want to limit myself only to the application of diagrams to ground plans. As it is known, the medieval master mason thought essentially in three dimensions. He had to have a perfect ability to take the elevation from the ground plan. Taking the measure of the ground plan was a matter of using the key dimensions in the plan to generate the main division of the elevation. It was a modular principle that established a set of proportions that could be reproduced horizontally and vertically throughout the building. We call it constructive geometry. These abilities were passed on by many generations of builders who gained experience from their apprenticeship in the best cathedral lodges, starting from the basic mason's works and advancing to building designs. In medieval architecture, rhythm was the logical consequence of the use of the above mentioned classical theories of proportion with the application of constructive geometry. It is best perceived in monumental longitudinal spaces of basilicas where rows of piers or columns and vaulting shafts corresponding to bays form regular rhythm in the interior to which the same rhythm of windows and buttresses or flying buttresses corresponds on the exterior. The paradigm changes only when regular rhythm is loosened, which is connected with a less rigid treatment of the existing tradition of the 13th century cathedral construction, as can already be seen in the French rayonant Gothic and English decorated style about 1300 and more radically, in a different way to be more precise, in the production of the late St. Vitus Lodge in Prague led by Peter Parler. I will try to visually describe this moment of the radical change of regular rhythm and order. The French art historian Yves Gallet pursued a special relationship between the French architectural production from 1250 to 1350 and the local cathedral production characterized by the emergence of motet. Similar to the motet that ornaments the tenor's melody, many additional elements were added to the basic articulation division of the cathedral architecture of the 1250 that in a very simplified way can be called an ornament or decor. decor. 
In Gallet's view, the main aspect of the French rayonant style is the re-evaluation of the formal vocabulary, all the known examples from which I select only some. For example, Montreuil, Notre Dame, Saint Chapelle, Saint Urbain et Trois, Carcassonne, and so on. Vertical open work articulation, richly crocketed, opaque gables with pinnacles. Show how racial articulation was increasingly questioned. In England, this gradual change on the basic of the French Gothic was reflected in an incredible invention of forms and dynamics surpassing everything on the continent. The age of choir of the Lincoln Cathedral, the retro choir at Wells Cathedral, Ely Cathedral, and so on. Gallet further points out how the, I quote, highly refined polyphonic compositions were officially condemned in 1324-25 by Pope John XXII in his decree on church music known as Docta Sanctorum, where the Pope criticizes the vagaries of these avant-garde motet composers. Novis noted intendant, melodias, roquetis, intersecant, discantibus lubricant, and so on. Nevertheless, the tune that John XXII commissioned from the English master for the Avignon Cathedral is an example of extraordinary rich tomb microarchitecture from the repertoire of the English decorated style. Its only analogy is suggested by the tomb of King Edward II, who died in 1327. Regarding the Prague Cathedral, the first indications of regular rhythm changes were detected in the work of the first master, Matthias of Arras, Magister Operis from 1342 to 1352, who brought to Prague the sophisticated form of the rayonant style of architecture from southwestern France. The additive regular rhythm on the ground plan and elevation, radial chapels of the choir, is slightly disturbed here. That is, the clustering of flying buttresses penetrating the walls of longitudinal chapels, the consequence of the conflict between the interior polygon and the perimeter wall, causes the change of rhythm, both the accent and the pause. Additionally, the pinnacles penetrating the cornice signified the disruption of the horizontal border between the ground and first floors. Peter Parler, on the other hand, surprisingly observes the regularity of classical cathedrals. From Arras's modern rayonant architecture, he goes back to the Metropolitan Cathedral in Cologne. It is the earlier style tradition. Plasticity wins over linearity. Yet the situation in Prague, where the sacred topography of the metropolitan church determined by the south architectural side and connected with the tomb of the main patron, St. Wenceslas, the royal necropolis, the treasury with the most precious relics, and the places reserved for mansionaries and canons prompts him to unorthodox solutions. They suggest to abandon the harmony of regularly occurring schemes in both the ground plan and elevation. Irregularity is no longer hidden behind a harmonious regular wall, but rather becomes a pretext for experiments. The function of the place is more important than regular rhythm. This Liberation from the traditional order is best reflected in the ex exterior where it does not disturb the liturgy taking place in the interior. The cathedral's parterre, south facade with a portico and staircase, open staircase linked to the buttress and south transept. At the same time, these disturbances of order are the logical consequence of the basic concept of the ground plan arrangement that had to adapt to the unchanging place of the burial of the main uh, patron, Saint Wenceslas, and his new chapel. Uh, see the ground plan. The radical 
loosening of rhythm further appeared in the upper parts of the south facade, whose organic part is formed by the single great south tower, Belfry, in the ground plan constituting a pendant to the cube of the chapel of St. Wenceslas, and in the elevation being the main dominant of the entire cathedral. Beginning in 1380s, Peter Parler's sons, John and Wenceslas, continued the basic project of the south facade arrangement. They were responsible for the upper levels of the tower, unfinished by 1420, without octagonal lantern spire. Anyway. Summary. Breaking the order and disturbing harmony in the sense of symmetry takes place in the south facade of the cathedral simply by the fact that it is fully controlled by an unusual robust tower situated in the wrong place, whereas two towers placed on each side of the transept were more common. Moreover, Regular rhythm is disturbed on this very tower both in horizontal and vertical planes. The borders of stories are not observed. The articulation, division of blank buttresses penetrates them, vaulting shafts and at different levels where the longest ones hold their lines as high as possible to pass them onto the upper, unfinished stories. The regular rhythm of repeating elements disappeared and was replaced by irregular and disharmonious rhythm. The running of the vertical, as if endless motion, suggests the keeping of a single tone running above and penetrating rich irregular patterns of traceries on the gable, overlapping at several levels. It is a brilliant example of dealing with previous tradition. With everything the canon of Gothic architecture has created over the past 250 years. Clever, witty, sophisticated, masterful. Thank you for your attention. So. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, we have a part of description of this sub tower, but uh, we delete it because. Uh, the long <laughs> time, so uh, I am preparing to okay. prepare it to the discussion. If you have uh, any question, uh, I I don't have. Clara, you are sharing your screen. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So thank well, you very well, much. Well, <laughs> this view into the late medieval architecture and uh, the rhythm questions of rhythm and proportions. We have uh, time for short discussion, for sure. So if there are any questions, please. It is not uh, so easy to see it all yeah. on this south tower. Uh, uh, Ellen, uh, if you have a question, please send. A e either you can raise a hand with the, uh, with the um, Function raise hand, or uh, you can just uh, write some uh, something to the chat. So, Ellen uh, was, I think, the first, uh, and Barbara was then after that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for this very interesting paper. Um, I, I would love to to read that again because there were so many interesting details. Um, I just want to uh, to. Um, to to bring to your attention maybe something mm -hmm. um, you might know or you might not know because it's not translated into English. Um, this is an article by Christian Carden who has died in, in mm -hmm. 2015, um, which is on cathedral rhythms. The title is, if I say it in English, cathedral rhythms. Um, mm -hmm space, time, structures in Gothic polyphony around 1200. That is a um, uh -huh. Thank you. Um, interlocking yes, yes. With, uh, with your, so maybe this might be interesting yes, for you. Yes, yes. When I first uh, read is. something about these rhythmical things, about these mm -hmm. vaults and the impressions, and, and he mm -hmm. connects it with the polyphony in Notre Dame. So that's mm -hmm. just what I Thank you very to much. Say. Yes. yes. It's very interesting. I will be... Uh, 
it's pleasure to read it after, yes. I perhaps re uh, write it down into the chat for everybody who's interested. Yes, yes. Then Barbara had, Barbara Hagiglo had a question. Barbara, do you want to say it? You, you just wrote it in, into the chat. Okay, I just wanted to know if uh, there were any aspects of disorder or mm -hmm. of uh, embellishment decoration that are unique in Prague mm -hmm. that are particular to St. Vitus. Mm -hmm. uh, or this uh, chapter which we have. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is this uh, strange irregularity. Uh, it is uh, not uh, a very symmetric articulation, but it is this contrapunct and uh, the irregularity in all aspects uh, of this uh, vocabulary of, of Gothic architecture. And do you, think, do, you, do you think these also have a numerical count explanation, the irregularities. Are they based on number or are they based on something else, uh, design? No, it is this magic uh, constructive geometry, <laughs> which we don't know so, <laughs> so precisely. But um, uh, uh, when I wrote about uh, many years ago, uh, I have taught at the Prague University and uh, the uh, Buridanus philosophy. It was uh, famous at this uh, era in Prague University. And uh, they are this impetus, uh, which is uh, something like um, um, endless. endless movement, uh, <laughs> which is very, very studied in uh, this uh, era. So I, uh, I know uh, evidence for this uh, impact, uh, uh, but uh, I think it was atmosphere of uh, this uh, university and um, environment around uh, 1400. Uh, Royal courts also but in Prague. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not sure. I thank you also yes, the uh, for the quotation of the book, which is I see uh, 2020 should be published now. Mm. Uh, no, uh, which which book? Which uh, we have in the chat uh, from Christian Card and Cathedral Ritman round uh, yeah, yes, yes, I see. It be yes. published or uh -huh. has it been published already? Yeah, it was in March. Okay, so mm -hmm. brand yeah. new. Thank you thank for you. this. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. So it's very really interesting. Thank you very much. So mm -hmm. I wonder if there are other questions. If not, then thank you very much, Clara, once again for uh, for uh, your wonderful paper. I will now, um, because we are recording it and I have it separately, I will first, I will make a break because I have to 